Hi guys, how are you doing? So guys, come on, let's uh, continue. So now, a very, 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 very important concept today from Finance Act 2022. A sure shot question, you know, if you ask me in the 2023 examinations, be it May or November, 100% they should ask because it's a brand new amendment. It's uh, trending, so to speak. Yes, it's about virtual digital asset. So let me take you through the memorandum explaining the finance bill. So this is revenue mobilization. Nirmala auntie gave her speech. If you remember, Nirmala madam speech. So if you see, scheme for taxation of virtual digital assets. So VDA, virtual digital assets, have gained tremendous popularity in recent times and the volumes of trading in such digital assets has increased substantially. Further, a market is emerging where payment for the transfer of a VDA can be made through another VDA. So guys, before we go into all these things, obviously we need to understand what is a VDA, virtual digital asset. You would have heard of many things, right? Cryptocurrency, which has, you know, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, uh, and so many other coins, correct? Deso, Monero, so many things are there. Thousands and thousands of coins are there. Then you would have heard of, uh, you know, Metaverse, something called as Metaverse. You could you would have heard of Land on Metaverse. You would have heard of something called NFT, Non-Fungible Tokens. So, we need to understand what these things are. As I told you, short, short question because the uh, income tax department is now uh, ensuring that a completely unregulated sector like VDA is going to be regulated to some extent in terms of taxation. Correct? So, there may not be a regulator like SEBI is there for stock markets or RBI is there for the banking industry. Uh, but, at least through tax regulation, they are trying to bring things under control, correct? So they have inserted sections 115 BBH, it's what we're going to do today. And also we have, they have, uh, you know, re released 194S, introduced 194S, that is, uh, what do you say, uh, TDS, tax deducted at source on these cases, along with various things, uh, plus other things also are there. Very, very, very important guys, very important. And they have defined what do you mean by a virtual digital asset. This is the entire memorandum. What do you mean by a virtual digital asset? Everything. Anyway, come to our notes. Come to our notes to uh, VDA notes. Come to our VDA notes, my dear friends. In that two clause. So basically, this is applicable from assessment year 23-24. So extremely important for the May 23 and November 23 examinations, my dear friends. I expect a short, short question, maybe four mark question, right? They should ask. It will be awesome. So they have defined two clause 47A defines what do you mean by a virtual digital asset. So you will see 100% nothing you will understand if you read the, what do you say, definition. But of course, I am going to explain to you, don't worry. So this is just probably like a one hour video, what a short video. Please, please listen in, four marks in your pocket for sure. Pocket only is not there, anyway. four marks. Okay, guys, cool. So what do you mean by virtual digital asset? Any information or code or number or token not being Indian or foreign currency. No mugging up in our classes. No bloody mugging up. Uh, this only you read this and go. Exam will come. Question. Even if you do not know virtual digital asset, uh, virtual digital asset uh, definition, you will still probably be able to write the question. But that's not what we are here for. Correct? We are here to what? Ensure that not only we write the answer and get full marks. Tomorrow, if any chartered accountant, if any person asks you, sir, what is VDA? Sir, that one thing I wrote, I left it as choice in the exam, sir. In fact, except the definition, other things you ask me, sir, I've mugged up everything. No, that is not what we are. You all know. We all know how we are, how we are studying this particular tax paper, correct? We are bringing about a revolution in uh, DT education. We are doing it the way nobody else has ever done, nobody else can ever do. Okay, that's the intention of these classes, my dear friends. Come on, no mugging up, pure concept. Okay, yes. Uh, any information or code or number or token generated through cryptographic means, brilliant, providing a digital representation of value exchanged with or without consideration, the promise of representation of having inherent value or functions as store of value or a unit of account, including its use in any financial transaction or investment can be transferred, stored or traded electronic. Sir, mother promise. I think I understood, sir. Excellent. Very good. No problem. So for that, my dear buddies, what we need to understand is 
what the hell is a cryptographic means what do you mean by cryptographic means how does this cryptography work what is it exactly what do you mean by cryptography and what because of this cryptography what exactly is a blockchain my dear friends all these things work only through blockchain technology so let's take 10 15 minutes to understand what is blockchain technology quickly with a simple example and then later we will get into this uh, you know we'll get into deep waters with this virtual digital asset after this session i can assure you because cbdt has released many circulars will you read it your head head will go topsy turvy so i am going to make it very simple for you if you see this is the entire notes three pages notes that's it I have made everything in charts becomes very very simple cbdt guidelines where my character oops sorry my character is also there correct pj right there it's me only yes yes okay and um, one more character is there kg right so two characters we have played around and we have understood what the cbdt has given only that only in a very understandable format i have given okay it's an understandable format if you study this much and go three pages i can assure you whatever they give three marks four marks it's in your pocket i can assure you that my dear friends okay but before that Ah, this VDA means VDA. Now let's go next. No. Let's understand, dear friends, what do you mean by VDA? Virtual Digital Asset, shall we? Let's go ahead. Come on. Cool. So let me just, uh, you know, open that for you. Right. So let's take an example, guys. We have Virat Kohli, Rohit Sharma, and KL Rahul. Right? These three are there. Now, this you leave it. Okay. So basically, this Bitcoin protocol is used where? Everywhere in uh, mobile and uh, you know in other currency it is credit or debit card but here if you see in uh, bitcoin you know technology the main protocol is called as bitcoin protocol protocol means rule okay protocol means rule just remember that okay whereas in other currency if it's debit card credit card etc the underlying system will be banks but in basically in bitcoin when you transact using your mobile, whatever the case may be, the underlying system is called Bitcoin protocol. Protocol means a set of rules. Just remember that, okay? So, I already have released the basics of blockchain. If you want, you can uh, watch it. It's there, you know, uh, on YouTube. You can check it out. You already, you can watch that. Other, otherwise, you can, you know, if you don't watch it also, it's okay. You can directly see this because I'm, I'm using a practical example to understand. But if you want a little bit more basics, you can go check that video. Right. So, let us assume that Virat, the, these three friends, you know, were uh, going every month and at the end, they're just for fun, having fun, going for movies, having drinks, enjoying. So, one particular month, VK paid 1000 rupees, KL paid 650, RS paid 750 rupees. That other number, you leave it, okay? So, these three, they paid 2400 rupees, they paid. At the end of the month, they have to settle, no? At the end of the month, they have to settle. How much is it? 1000 plus 650 plus 750 is 2400 rupees. 2400 rupees divided by 3, each person share comes up to 800 bucks. So, at the end of the month, VK says, bro, please pay 800 rupees. So, now, this ledger is maintained by Virat Kohli also. This ledger is maintained by KL Rahul also. This ledger is maintained by Rohit Sharma also. Basically, in Excel sheet, they have maintained a ledger. This, this month, this much spending we have done. Okay. Cool. Now, at the end of, what is the rule of this, guys? What is 2400 divided by 3 is how much? 850 rupees. 800 rupees, sorry. Now, which means KL Rahul has to pay Virat Kohli 150 rupees. Because Virat Kohli has, was supposed to spend 800. He has spent 200 more. KL Rahul has to had to spend 800 he has spent 650 so 150 has to pay to virat kohli and rohit sharma has to pay 50 rupees there ends the matter so what is the entire uh, scene we have seen uh, rahul has to pay kohli 150 bucks sharma has to pay kohli 50 bucks now what are the rule any person can add lines to the ledger no assume this was maintained in the google sheet assume it was maintained in google sheets Anybody can add, whoever those three people can add to the ledger. Everyone will settle real money at the end of each month. So, first VK said 1000, then Rohit Sharma uh, spent whatever that's 750 rupees and then he added it. Where did he add? He added it onto that ledger, Google Sheets, for example. Now, the beauty is what if this Google Sheet ledger is made public where the entire public can write whatever they want? Deadly. 
Who verifies it? God only knows. Who authenticates it? God only knows. It's an open file, assume. Doesn't it question your trust on the ledger? Yes. Sir, what has this got to do with blockchain, sir? Hold on. Right? If you don't understand the blockchain technology, you will never be able to understand virtual digital asset. And if you are not able to understand virtual digital asset, how the hell will you understand taxation? And if you don't understand the taxation part of the underlying asset, which is the VDA, how can you understand, how can you even guide your clients, my dear friends? Think of the future. Of course, the examination in mind, but think of the future. Tomorrow, you should be a chartered accountant where people will come to you and say, wow, you're extremely knowledgeable. Are you a CA? Rather than people coming and asking you, bro, how did you clear CA exam? Correct? Worst possible thing that you can ever hear from anybody. Right? Yes, come on guys. Who validates it? God only knows. There's no regulator for validation. Right? So, that's why the problem was the fourth question. Who validates it? Don't know. That's why Nirmala Madam said tax everything. No, not this. Not the Excel sheet. Come, come to it. I'm coming to it. Now guys. So, basically everything works through... Con you would have heard of the digital signature, DSC. So, one private key will be there and one public key will be there. Right? So basically when you sign something as a digital, signa you know, digital uh, certificate when you sign, correct, let's say you sign, sign some, uh, you have a, a DSC, director's DSC will be there, you will sign. After you sign, obviously who authenticates it? There the ROC's office will authenticate it because they will have something called as a public key. So this private key would be in encrypted form and that will be decrypted by whom? By the ROC's office. That's a simple way there. Now, if I take the same concept and work on this particular simple transaction between three people, three friends, Virat Kohli, KL Rahul and uh, you know, Rohit Sharma, what happens? Basically that ledger, if you add that cryptography, cryptography is what? I told you this uh, digital signature uh, where it uses that concept of cryptography. Cryptography is a mechanism. So once that mechanism is used whereby it cannot be changed, it cannot be changed or rather it creates a trial of the entire transaction that is called as your cryptocurrency, your Bitcoin, all these things. It is nothing but it creates a trial. But now let's, you know, figure out this word cryptography because that is what is there in the definition 2 clause 48, 47a which says through cryptography, through cryptography all these things a virtual digital asset is created. Cryptocurrency, my dear friends, is a virtual digital asset because it uses cryptography. Now, what is this cryptography? Very, very simple. General rule, anyone can add lines to the ledger, but only signed transactions are valid. Using this cryptography, Virat Kohli will sign saying that, yes, I made the change in that example. Rohit Sharma will sign saying, I made the change, right? That's how it is. Now, Let's take an example of Mr. Nax. Mr. Nax is also joins the party. He said, hi, I'm Mr. Nax. So he said, I haven't paid anything. Basically what he does know, he also enters the party. 600, 600, 600, 600, everyone has to pull in. Let's assume 2400 is the pool. Correct? Now, Mr. Nax, what if he refuses to pay and what if he runs away? What if he runs away? Correct? So if you see, if this is the ledger, VK paid 1000, KL paid 6,500, RS paid 7,500, Mr. Nax paid 0. What happens? Everybody is putting into the bucket, but the thing is, Mr. Nax is not putting anything into the bucket here. If this happens, that is why, guys, we need protection, and that protection is called cryptography. Cryptography. I'll explain. So now the question is, where is this ledger maintained? What is this Bitcoin? Can you see Bitcoin? No. What is this exactly? Basically, Mr. A will maintain it. He will transfer to Mr. S. Correct? Any transaction like that, the entire general public, whoever has this data, assume that Excel sheet as public data. Anybody can add, anybody can do. Where is the protection? Where is the cryptography involved? That is why, my dear friends, we need something called as blockchain technology. The foundation of blockchain is the art of cryptography. To ensure that, okay, there are so many documents here. Which one is correct? 
सिंपल ट्रांजेक्शन मिस्टर ए ट्रांजेक्टेड समथिंग टू मिस्टर एस मिस्टर ए सोल्ड इज बिटकॉइन टू मिस्टर एस मिस्टर ए सोल्ड समथिंग टू मिस्टर एस एवरीबडी इज टेलिंग द सेम थिंग बट अमाउंट दे आर चेंजिंग जस्ट लाइक मिस्टर नैक्स मेरिट ऑफ जीरो वेर इज द कंट्रोल करेक्ट हाउ डू वेरीफाई दिस ट्रांजेक्शन हू इज मेन्टेनिंग दिस लेटर देर इज नो रेग्युलेटर इज देर एनी रेग्युलेटर नो सो गाइज दैट इज वाई that is why it is very important that the entire series of transactions has to go through something called the bitcoin protocol rule you know bitcoin protocol i told you that protocol is called sha 256 sha 256 is called as the protocol once you apply this protocol correct it's it's a coding mechanism once you apply this coding mechanism the transaction gets protected how with this example only i'll tell you so basically you have a set of transactions vk paid 1000 kl paid 650 rs paid 750 that number i told you to forget that time no the moment this is entered in the ledger a specific number will be generated using the protocol called sha 256 sha 256 is a protocol my dear friends a rule once that rule is applied what happens a specific number will be generated now that specific number important to understand is called as pow proof of work proof of work okay that is called as proof of work once this is set it's called proof of work this proof of work is the most important thing in bitcoin techno in in cryptography correct you know cryptography which will help us that's called block blockchain protocol correct blockchain protocol so even in bitcoin it's called bitcoin protocol because in bitcoin also this is used in everything this is used sha 256 if you want a doge coin that's also one type of coin that's called doge coin protocol monero coin monero coin protocol correct anything nft nft protocol for all protocols what is the underlying rule how do you how do you create us you know trail of transactions through sha 256 and that is called as proof of work now let me you know tell you if you see for example see vk has maintained this kl has maintained this and rohit sharma has maintained this which ledger to rely on we don't know that's why we should create what rely on something called as proof of work how does that work guys as i told you the moment the moment i enter into this transaction each ledger will be organized into blocks there are only three friends but the entire excel sheet is public anybody can enter whatever they want but how do i know only three entries are correct how do i know that virat kohli's enter entry is correct rohit sharma's is correct and uh, you know kl rahul's is correct through this blockchain protocol called sha256 that unique number it generates right so if you see for each block proof of work will be found for each block proof of work will be found a block is valid an entire block is valid only if it has proof of work which means that number has to be found out who will find out the you know uh, numbers there are called some people called blockchain miners they'll mine they'll keep on searching they will find the you know proof of work for example guys you see this entire these three numbers that you see right this is called as the proof of work this is called as the proof of work for each particular transaction there will be a unique number virat kohli will have a specific set of numbers his proof of work kl rahul will have something rohit sharma will have something now the beauty is how it is connected is guys my dear friends check it out when virat kohli makes the entry first a proof of work is created by applying what guys sha 256 and that gets automatically attached to the next transaction which is entered by uh, rohit sharma and then by the other guy if you see this number will get attached to this this number will get attached to this so this entire thing plus sha 256 will give you this number now this number plus whatever has been entered into plus sha 256 will give the third number and the third number will get attached to the next transaction whereby all other people who write whatever they want no it will not get attached only the authentic you know what do you say a uh, chain of transactions get attached through this wonderful concept one block second block third block 
connected through SHA-256 protocol and that my dear friends is called blockchain technology. Blockchain technology. Do you understand? Blockchain. Chain of blocks connected through cryptography. If this is the secure level that we have, that is why many, many assets are created. Right? Many, many assets are created. So, if you see, these ledger blocks are chained with hash function. Hash function is that only. SHA-256 is called as a cryptographic hash function. Correct? CHF. That's called as a blockchain. Very, very simple. Let me not go more in depth into it, but using this blockchain technology, we can do many things. For example, practically you have seen the Splitwise app. I use Splitwise app whenever I go on trip with my friends and all those things. Splitwise app is this only, whatever I just told, that's how Splitwise works. In Splitwise, you can add payment, you know, and it will be shared among all the things. Use that app. It's, I'm not, you know, it's not a paid promotion. Use it. It really helps. Ola app, Swiggy. Swiggy also uses blockchain. The moment you order, that, that it is using a hash function, order number is generated and it is attached to you. Tomorrow you cannot say, I never ordered, right? Everything, my dear friends, your UPI app, your all UPI apps, Paytm, everything works on blockchain technology. And now assets are being created using this. Assets are being created. What assets are being created? I can create my own digital avatar. Nobody can use my avatar. How do I create my avatar? Again, using this blockchain technology. Correct? I am a musician. I will create one piece of music. And that piece of music, in real life, I own it. But I will digitize it. And the digital version also can be sold. That is called non-fungible token. Fungible meaning only is that, which cannot be what? Manipulated. Non-fungible. Non-fungible means, non-fungible means it cannot be manipulated. So, non-fungible token. So, if I am Virat Kohli, I can sell my bat to you right there, bat. But I can create a digital version of that bat through this blockchain technology. Hundreds of Virat Kohli's, where Virat Kohli bat can come online. But which is the original Virat Kohli bat created by Virat Kohli's team using what te uh, technology? Blockchain technology. It can never be manipulated. NFT. Right? That's the thing. So, basically, this is the beauty of blockchain technology. With this, my dear friends, the, the what do you say, uh, possibilities are endless. Possibilities are endless. Right? So, how will I find all this? How do I know that is owned by Virat Kohli? That's why these people who create, like Virat Kohli's team will create the block. Right? And the others will search for that block. And that is called as mining. Now, this mining, etc., this is all taken from my blockchain course that I have done. In the sense, I have recorded a 3 to 4 hour blockchain in-depth course, which talks about the basics only, but in-depth, exhaustive basics. So, there I have taken. Let's not go ahead. This much is enough to understand what, guys, blockchain technology. Now, come back to other areas. Now, this, is there a tax on land owned? Is land an asset? Is one more question. Metaverse is a, you know, alternative reality, my dear friends. And a couple from Tamil Nadu actually created their avatars, imagine, in the Metaverse. And they got married there. They even asked people to come to their marriage in their own avatars. All this is the reality, my dear friends. Correct? All this is the reality. Nike recently released, you know, their own Nike land. And you can actually buy, for example, you can buy those uh, sneakers if you want to, right? Yes, they launched 20,000 virtual sneakers out of which 98 were limited edition. Yes, you can buy. Now, when you buy, my dear friends, Nirmala Madam says, bro, cheating, you are buying there. What about tax? Tax. The buyer has to pay tax. But then, can Nirmala Madam control if I buy Nike, which is in USA, assume. No. She is telling, let us regulate what is there in our country. If you buy any NFT, anything by an Indian resident, basically. A resident company, resident, uh, you know, individual, whatever it is. 
If a person from abroad buys, will it be called? Yes, of course. Why not? Anything that is accruing or arising in India, I am going to tax, is what Nirmala Madam says. Correct? Because all these things were outside the tax net. Now it has come inside with this amazing concept of taxation on VDA, which we are going to discuss the tax provisions. First, we need to understand the basics. Okay? So if I buy a Nike shoe, USA, taxation will not apply. But if I create something and if somebody else from outside buys, it will apply. So one Indian only buys my product, it will apply. Correct? Yes. Land. I can buy land also, my dear friends. Because metaverse are measured in tiles. I can buy each square feet. It's, it's in tiles. I can buy one tile. And that one tile also is protected using what? Blockchain technology, SHA-256, cryptographic hash function I'll add and that tile. It's a unique ID is created and that ID belongs to me. I have to buy. Now an Indian company, as I told you, that Indian company is already launching these land, etc. I want to buy buy one square uh, you know, footage, one square feet of land I want to buy in the metaverse. Will TDS apply? Yes. Got it? So if you see the meaning of this, you leave it. Okay. Running an e-commerce business or hosting an event also, definitely. You can host events. Like one of the companies in Chennai already has a convention hall digitally created. I can hire that. Think about it. I am the buyer. I am hiring the service. Is it allowed? We will see that. I mean, should I pay TDS? Yes. That 47A is what is inserted. Now the question is, capital asset, 2 clause 14, capital asset means property of any kind held by an SSE, whether or not connected with this business or profession, we know that. CIT as a starter services said, land. The word property is obviously a huge meaning can be given to the word property. Any right which can be called property will be incurred in the capital asset definition. Now virtual digital asset. The biggest question was before the government, land in the metaverse, for example, if it is not a capital asset, will it be a virtual digital asset or are virtual digital assets only capital asset? Was the big question. Our government has made it so easy. Government has made it so easy. Let me just come to that now. Yeah. Government has made it so easy. Check it out. Hope you got the point. Now let's read the notes, my dear friend. Now you see. Cryptographic means providing digital representation of value exchanged. I have created an artwork. Mickey Mouse I have drawn, guys. Awesome. Yes, Mickey Mouse. One fat Mickey Mouse I have, I have drawn. If I print this and sell you, this is art. But using SHA-256, if I create using blockchain technology a unique ID, this will be called as a non-fungible token. Can I buy this? Yes. Let us say an Indian artist creates this. That art can be directly, he can do some art or he can use artificial intelligence and then he converts that into a non-fungible token. NFT in 2021 was a super hit. 2022, everything crumbled. Because NFT for a particular, you know, I own an MG Hector car. MG was the first ever automobile company to come out with NFTs of uh, merchandise. But the thing is, they started, all people, we are Indians, guys. What we started doing was we went on Google search for a picture, Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse picture came, some stolen picture that is, using that stolen picture, which is actually copyright is held by Disney, I said on this also I will create NFT, Indians we have amazing engineers, they created using blockchain technology on a stolen image, imagine, and then they started selling, yes, please take it, people started saying that, oh, this is a unique thing available, let's buy, later they came to know, of all the things, only some 15-20 things were original pieces. Everything was copied. So the entire NFT market came down. In simple words, I am explaining. 
there was lot of turmoil people started losing money like crazy elon musk came and told yes i am going to take payment in bitcoin bitcoin prices right there is no what do you say market it does no regulator then he said no no i will take doge coin so doge coin you know it went up so when there is zero regulation some regulation is there the you know and that is this particular thing now and guys you will be shocked to know that we indians have always i mean been we are happy to know that we indians have always been very very skeptical about these things even during the 2008 subprime mortgage crisis all banks started you know selling these uh, collateralized debt obligations across the world except india where they said nothing doing we will not sell any of these things that's why we were protected by that uh, recession that happened market collapse economy collapse forget about market in usa but you will also be you know find it interesting to know that a country called el salvador has established has accepted bitcoin as legal tender my dear friends they have accepted bitcoin as legal tender and they have now opened a national bitcoin office imagine this fellow this guy is the king of el salvador see cool fellow but imagine deadly it is he has opened it president naib bukele naib bukele has done it see here the verse token sale is live all this now is a problem if i am buying any bitcoin buying any cryptocurrency buying any nft buying any land what to do check now cryptographic means providing a digital representation of value exchange yes so if you see the cg may exclude any digital asset from the definition of virtual digital asset by notification they have included one non fungible token shall be a digital asset paintings you know uh, music whatever it is within 2 clause 47a as specified by the cg but think about it does not include a non fungible token whose transfer results in transfer of ownership of underlying tangible asset and such transfer is legally enforceable guys i make one painting like this which is tangible and i using sha256 i create a nft if i buy that nft i am going to own this tangible asset is it virtual digital asset no that's why i did all this i actually drew a painting converted that painting's originality title using vda and said if you buy that virtual if you buy uh, what do you say that digital asset you will own my painting that painting is tangible is it a vda it is actually a vda but is it vda as per income tax act no hope you got the point on the other hand this this shoe that i showed you i'm just saying if an indian company uh, this doll if an indian company wants to sell this shoe this shoe for 1 lakh 30000 dollars it's a virtual shoe it is not a real shoe i am buying virtual shoe people bought it for 1 lakh 30000 dollars per pair i am not joking i am not making it up if i buy that shoe not real virtual shoe this is a virtual digital asset as per income tax act hope you got it right if i buy a real shoe real shoe is there only token is sold in nike land i buy the token virtually then go i can using that token it's a code here i can go scan the code saying that i am the owner he'll give me the shoe is that a virtual digital asset no that is what they are trying to tell correct specified but does not include a non fungible token whose transfer results in transfer of ownership of underlying tangible asset underlying tangible asset it is not okay so if you have any qr code which is again linked specifically you can scan that and you will get that particular item 
tangible item, not a VDA. Though it is technically VDA, government has excluded it through the notification. Then like that, my dear friends, when I go and swipe a card in my credit card, I get points. Cred, for example, I have for some 10 lakh, assume 10 lakh cred coins. Is 10 lakh cred coins actually a virtual digital asset? Can I redeem those coins for something? Yes. Can I redeem those coins for, for buying, you know, some item? Yes. I want to buy a speaker. Can I redeem 5 lakh cred coins? Yes. Will I get an asset? Yes. But those coins, are they virtual digital asset? Yes. But government says no. See? Gift card, voucher, mileage point, reward point, loyalty point, etc. are now excluded from subscription to websites, platforms, any app. Subscription to app is a VDA. It is excluded from the definition of VDA. Subscription to app is an actual VDA but government says no. So for examination purposes, income tax purposes, what is not VDA? Tangible asset is there, I've created a token. You give the token, I'll get the tangible asset. I'm an artist, I've created the painting, Mickey Mouse. That is not VDA. Then loyalty points, gift card, mileage points, reward points, all this, not VDA. Not VDA. Right? Then what about land? Now, is this a capital asset or not a capital asset? What about capital asset like land? Correct? Or is it a capital asset, not a capital asset? Beautifully. There are, they have inserted two sections, 115 BBH, 115 BBH and 194S, okay? So, first of all, they have defined it under, sorry, they have defined it under 2 clause 47A. Next, they have written 115 BBH, this is taxation, then 194S, 194S. This will be taxation, this will be TDS. This is the chargeability, this is the TDS. Chargeability and this is the TDS. Chargeability, this is the tax. While computing your income, just like lottery, etc., you need to collect this. Correct? If you are uh, doing this lottery, horse race, etc., chargeability is different. And then you have to pay. TDS also is different if you know. So, lottery, chargeability is also 30%, TDS is also 30%, but here it is different. Chargeability is 30%, but TDS will be 1%. Remaining, you have to add it to your income and later pay tax. So, they are regulating it. Please note. Now, the question was, I had released a video on Metaverse on land before, that time they had not defined. Now, I am asking. Land, is it a capital asset or not? Whether everything is included? Whether everything is transfer? You see, 115 BBH, whether total income of an SC includes any income from transfer of any virtual digital asset. Income tax payable is what? See here. Purpose of this section, the word transfer as defined in 2 clause 47 shall apply to any virtual digital asset, whether capital asset or not, deadly. Whether it is a capital asset or not, let us not go into the definition only. Whatever I have told as VDA, whether it's a capital asset, not a capital asset, I don't care. Taxation will apply. Hope you got the point, my dear friends. So, tax on income on transfer of VDA, 30%. Expenses or set off of losses is not allowed at all while computing income on transfer of VDA. No expenses will be allowed, my dear buddies, deadly. No set-off of losses. I have business loss, I don't care. I have any other head loss, I don't care. You see? No deduction as of any expenditure other than cost of acquisition, if any. Of course, cost of acquisition has to be allowed. 
or allowance or set off of any loss shall be allowed to the SSC under any provision of the Act. No set off of loss from transfer of VDA computed under A of subsection 1 shall be allowed against income computed under any provision of this Act. And such loss shall not be allowed to be carried forward to succeeding assessment years. I made loss by selling Bitcoin 10 lakh rupees. Can I carry forward? No. No. I made loss of 2 lakh rupees. Can I set it off from income from business? No. Capital gains? No. Anything else? No. Not possible. I made loss from sale of Bitcoin. I made profit from sale of NFT. Can I set it off? Answer. No set off of loss from transfer of VDA computed under clause A shall be allowed against income under any provision of this act to the SSE. Against income computed under any provision of this act. To the SSE and such loss shall not be allowed to be carried forward. It doesn't say any other provision. This will open up, lit litigation will open up. Right? But practically, I mean, I've done a couple of cases. My friends are fully into this. So there we have set it off because they are here talking about what? Income under 1A. Income tax will calculate transfer of such virtual digital asset. So, ideally, if there is a loss overall year, I will take all the VDAs and whatever income on that. If there is a loss, overall loss cannot be set off. Mind you, here it doesn't say any other provision of this act. If it said any other provision of this act, then you could have clearly interpreted it as loss from this VDA can be set off against profit of VDA. Correct? So, this will definitely open up into litigation. Examination will not ask. This part you leave it. Okay? Yes. So, basically in the exam, what? No set off of losses. No set off of losses. So, inter head set off not possible. In my regular batch, we will discuss this more in depth. Leave it. Because I will have to talk about this one word. Such means what? What is such? Later. Not now. Not in the fast track premium batch. Okay? Next. Not needed also guys. Okay. Only cost of acquisition, of course, is deductible, 100%. So, if I sold uh, Bitcoin for uh, 10 lakhs, I had purchased it for 8 lakhs, 2 lakhs is the income, on which 30% is what? No carry forward. Here I have given, see, transfer shall apply to any virtual digital asset, whether capital asset or not. Then, one more deadly thing. What if I gift my Bitcoin to my wife? If I gift my Bitcoin to my friend, Sir, girlfriend, no da, friend, right? Beautiful, Nirmala madam, 56 to 10 also she has amended and she has inserted VDA there also. So, gift of anything is also covered under 56 to 10, gift taxation there it will come, income from other sources, deadly, right? So, if you see the gist of the entire thing, I have added it here in this. So, the material is designed in such a way that you need not read the bare act. In the class, you will read the bare act, analyze each and every word, then come to the material, then exam, one day before the exam and for everything else, only this. It has a lot of thought has gone into creating this, you know, material. Let us see the clarification still, right? Now, guys, coming to the taxation. Taxation. I am buying an NFT, non-fungible token from an artist. And mind you, that token doesn't represent any painting. That token is the digital version. Basically, I am buying the digital version like that Nike shoe. I am buying that digital shoe. Okay? Now, the primary liability is on whom is the question. So, you see, very important section 194S, TDS. Chargeability is 115 BBH, taxability, I mean the TDS portion is 194S. Any person responsible for paying to any resident. So, this will not actually apply to Nike land shoes sold in, in USA. 
it applies to everything that is sold to a, by payment to a resident. Asset can be somewhere else also. Let's say one of my friends is selling a painting which was where the NFT was created in USA or anywhere across the world, but the payment is to a resident. That is what this covers. Any sum by way of consideration for transfer of VDA, VDA may be capital asset or not, we have seen. At the time of credit to such sum of the resident or the time of payment, whichever is earlier, same dialogue like all TDS sections, deduct an amount equal to 1% of such sum as income tax. So my dear friends, here if you come read with the CBDT guidelines, most important thing, section 194S, primary liability is the buyer. So Miss KG is a seller and owner of a Bitcoin or a painting, digital painting, which is an NFT, whatever the case may be. And when she is transferring it to me, Mr. PJ, Mr. PJ, who is the buyer, has to deduct TDS, whatever amount I am paying, minus 1% under 194S. Sir, but one doubt, sir. What if, sir, PJ and KG, they do it, sir, but through a e-commerce operator. For e-commerce operator, 194O will apply, sir. 194, you know, O will apply. What if KG is selling to PJ goods, is NFT, VDA, for more than 50 lakh rupees, for more than 50 lakh rupees. And PJ is a big buyer. His turnover is more than 10 crore rupees. What I am asking is, my dear friends, I am asking this, for example, if the VDA happens through a e-commerce operator, I am linking it to other sections. These sections have already been completed in class with charts and have made it very easy for you, if you remember. So, if his entire VDA transaction is going through 194O, what to do? Or, if I am seller, KG selling it to buyer, where buyer is a big buyer, I my turnover in the last year was 10 crore, what to do? Should I go to 194Q or 194O, can be asked in the exam, or should I stick to 194S? Check this. Notwithstanding anything contained in 194O, this section overrides 194O. Very clearly given. In case transaction is the provision, the set section is also applicable. Tax shall be deducted under 194S only. Correct? It will be under 194S and nowhere else. Got it, my dear friends? That's what. So, and also, if you see, is there, if any difficulty arises in giving effect to provisions of this section, board, that is CBDT, with prior approval of CG issue guidelines, these one deadly line is only these guidelines. Most, 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 most important for the examinations, which we are going to do. Right? They had this doubt also. What about 194Q? CBD said, bro, general rules of interpretation, bro, specific section will override general section. If there is VDA, don't go to O, Q, S, yeah, what, I mean, O, Q, T, yeah, whatever section you want, come to 194. S only. So those two points are covered. No need to read the bear act that we will do in class. Only this material. Check if provisions of both 194O and S apply, you should deduct tax under 194S. Point number 8. Point number 9. 
184, 184Q is not applicable when TDS direct tender. This section discussed already. Point number 10, CBDT may approval of CG issue guidelines. Guidelines you have to do here. All this is there down. Important. Anything they can, two, three to four marks, six marks also they can ask. You never know. Payer, any person. Payer, any person can be resident, non-resident. Can be resident, non-resident. Can be any person, guys. You see, a virtual digital asset is transferred to a non-resident. Provisions of 195 also shall apply. Obviously, 195 is non-resident taxation. So, if it is given to a non-resident, 194S read with 195, which we will cover in international taxation module. If it is to a resident, then of course, 194S will come. Who is this fellow? Buyer. Pay will be resident only. I am Nirmala Madam is controlling things that are happening in our country. Let the other people die. I don't care. All in other US and all a billion dollar company has been it's zero now. One percent of the consideration at the time of payment or credit, whichever is earlier. I have not paid, I have credited yet. Yes, whichever is earlier. Amount is 1 crore of which I have paid only 50 lakh. I should do it on 1 crore or 50 lakh. See, deadly guys, I can ask so many questions. Consideration payable, payable, payable. Correct? At the time of credit of such sum, any person paying, they are not telling, responsible for paying. So, if you put 1 crore as credit, full amount you have to pay, not the amount that you have actually paid. Hope you got it. Either some credit or at the time of payment, whichever is earlier, they should do it. Consideration for transfer of VDA, it can be a capital asset or otherwise. Now, if you think about it guys, at the end of the day, he is just a simple buyer. He has to deduct TDS. Should he take TAN number now for one simple transaction? If you remember previous discussions, 194O, 194Q, in all these are peculiar, uh, sorry, 194Q uh, uh, especially, not O. Q especially peculiar transactions 194M in which a normal individual 194IB rent normal individual I am 194IA transfer of immobile property so individual when I am purchaser of immobile property or a payer of rent more than 50,000 why should I take TAN and not needed right so you see even for this I am just buying one Bitcoin why tan? See here. Provisions of 203A will not apply. Provisions of 203A will not apply. Then one brand new section was there. Non-filer of return. Brand new section. If you are a non-filer of return, means what? This also they can ask you. This can be an exam question. Just give you here. Mr. A has on has not filed the return for 21 and 22, not filed. And in that TDS, return of income not filed. TDS of 60,000 was there, he has not taken credit also, has not filed the return also. This year, he has transferred a VD, I mean, he has bought a VDA. Correct? Or let's say he sold a VDA. Sold a VDA. The buyer, tell me one thing guys, in this example only. I'll come to this example only to make it easy. Miss KG is a person who has not filed the return for two years. TDS is more than 50k pending in the sense not claim credit. Miss KG is a non-filer. 
for such non filers a brand new section had been introduced in the previous uh, finance act 21 finance act 21 from 1st july 2021 to be precise 206 ab under 206 ab she has to pay double the rate or 5% whichever is higher what is the rate here 1% double the rate is 2% 2% or 5% whichever is higher let me show you that see here twice the rate 5% whichever is higher you have to pay now tell me practically will pj individual buying one bitcoin will i know whether kg filed return or not whether she has tds balance of 50000 or not how will i know why should i care why should i care tell me so guys beautiful every line means a lot i am not joking don't take it lightly anything they can ask see here provisions of 203a tan and 206 ab at 5% thing shall not apply means what no need of higher rate deduct 1% only no need of higher rate deduct 1% only got it here here shall not apply now nature of payment yes first if the consideration paid in this example if pj pj is paying the consideration buyer buyer is an individual who does not have any income from business or profession let's say i am a salaried employee i want to buy one bitcoin in my life one uh, what do you say objective i have is buying a bitcoin i buy let's say i buy it for 40000 rupees should i deduct tds for one transaction just assume should i deduct tds what do you think government said not required they said specified person who is an individual or hf not a company individual or hf all very very important points 100 person they lost any income from he doesn't have any income from business or profession point number 1 or let's say i am a businessman but i am a chaprasi what do you mean by chaprasi my turnover or gross receipts from business in the previous year does not exceed 1 crore or from profession does not exceed 50 lakhs i am either a salaried employee or i have other uh, apart from business i have income from other sources or if i am into business also i am a chaprasi businessman chaprasi professional means what turnover in the previous year 1 cr or this thing a uh, profession less than 50 lakhs less than or equal to 50 lakhs then i can pay consideration up to 50000 without tds i can pay consideration of you know without tds very very clearly they have given yes no tax shall be deducted in a case where consideration is payable by a specified person i told you specified person salaried person or this they can ask you an in the exam question they can ask you a salaried doctor who is working as an employee in uh, manipal hospitals earning 1 crore salary 1 or 2 crore salary per annum 2 crore salary per annum exam question they can ask you they want to make it tricky earning 2 crore per annum doctor salaried employee earning 2 crore per annum by sir vda worth 30000 what do you think will you see this no it is not income from business and not income from profession He is a salaried employee, as I told you. He is a doctor working as an employee in a company, not a consultant. Employee. He has a contract of service. 
30,000, what do you think? It will come under the first one. Does not have any income from business or profession. Very clearly given, see? Specified person. Does not have any income from business or profession. So yes, for him also, 30,000 will apply. When will you see, oh, the 50,000 will apply. When will you see that 1 crore only if he is in the business or profession? I hope you got the point. Anything they can ask to play around with you. Other cases, I am a big businessman. My turnover is 5 crore in the previous year. I am buying one NFT worth 15,000. Should I pay TDS? Yes. You see, no TDS if consideration is less than or equal to 10,000 during the financial year other than specified person. For specified person, up to 50,000, no TDS. Who is a specified person? Either is an employee or he has others, uh, apart from business, he has other income. Or, not and, or, if he is into business, previous year, less than or equal to 1 CR should be his turnover or gross assets from professional, less than or equal to 50 lakh. Then, limit is 50,000. Is 50,000 basic exemption limit? No. For example, if that fellow buys an asset worth 60,000, will he pay tax on 10,000? No, on full amount. Please. Don't, you know, again there get confused. Correct? It says does not exceed 50,000 during the financial year. No tax shall be deducted where it does not exceed. Value of such consideration does not exceed. What if I pay 20, 20, 20? No, it's not exceeding 50,000. Aggregate value. Hope you are getting the points, guys. Aggregate value they have given. 20, 20, 20. Sir, it's less than 50,000, sir. No tedious. Bro, aggregate value. So, you should add all the transactions during the year for that such consideration, whatever he has done for that digital asset. Is it per asset or all put together? Is it per asset or all put together? Oh, virtual digital asset, per asset. How many questions an examiner can ask you in MCQ? I hope you are able to understand and appreciate. Forget about appreciation. I hope you are able to understand. VDA, 50,000, 10,000, 1%, section over. You will examine your sitting. They are giving or you will tick something. Macha, dead easy paper. Result, easy dead. 65, 70, guaranteed. In the exam, divide by 2. In the uh, result, divide by 2, divide by 3. Chaprasi faculty didn't teach properly. Blame number one. Blame number two, book was bullshit. You will tell. Right? That's the problem, guys. Please. DT is no joke, but DT is easy. Correct? DT is no joke, DT is easy. All we need is not shortcut methodology. All we need is a proper detox. Detox, DT, detox. We need a detox. Not the stupid way we've been studying. We have to change the way we study. Hope you got the point. Right? Next. Done. Seventh point I'll cover through guidelines. Now, if I buy 40,000 asset, let's say I'm a specified person. 40,000 I buy. GST I will add, assume. Some 15,000 GST will come. Now, 55,000. What do you think? Or let's say 49, it shouldn't exceed. No, 49,000 plus some 6,000 GST. Is it exceeding 55,000? Should I pay CR? Any GST, any commission, etc. shall not be included to deduct tax on the consideration. Will not be included at all. See the examples and then we will do the CBDT guidelines. Income from salary 1 lakh, income from other sources 50,000, income from transfer of VDA 50,000. In this case, income of the individual other than income from VDA shall be below the basic exemption limit and that shall not be subject to tax. Obviously, 1 lakh 50,000 is below exemption limit, but no exemption here. Tax on VDA will be 30,000 into 50, 15,000. Plus higher education says 4%, 15,600. 
other income separate this separately you have to pay sir everything comes under basic exemption limit no relaxation absolutely no relaxation there is no relaxation whatsoever you have to pay sir i will not credit the person i will not pay also correct here nft i am getting the asset no nft to kg i have to put and kg to bank i will not put nft to bank i will not put nft to kg i'll say nft to suspense account in our balance sheet when i were not tallying suspense account nirmala madam is looking at you like this very hey, cheating will put suspense account and then you will i didn't credit to the buyer i didn't credit to the seller sorry i didn't pay nirmala madam will say when did you put it to suspense account that day only i put madam then that day only i have to pay ha huh? yes this point is there in all the sections anyway you know that where any sum referred to in subsection is credited to any account whether called suspense account by any other name in the books of pj such credit of sum shall be deemed to be credit to kg deadly section deadly okay next in the above example instead of income from salary except furnished loss from uh, business for lack in this case loss of business can only be set off against income from other sources remaining business loss 3 lakh t can be carried forward for the next year tax on vda will be calculated as above no loss can be set off against income from transfer of vda also you have seen that no set off of loss from transfer of vda and no other allowance or no set off of loss shall be allowed you have vda income set off against loss of any other head not possible you have any other head income set off against loss under vda not possible nothing is possible second chart now <clears throat> vda transaction can also happen through exchanges guys coin switch kuber you would have heard right then uh, wazirx you would have heard you know coin is one one more exchange coin switch kuber all these people are coming up now wazirx wazirx is the largest platform in india <coughs> now if mr pj transfers money to the exchange all civility guidelines miss miss kg gives the bitcoin through the exchange which i can trade now ideally who will take the what do you say tds portion i will deduct or exchange will deduct cbdt says it is better if exchange will take it up exchange will have to deduct exchange will deduct 1% tds and then give it to the miss kg whatever amount bitcoin is what i bought right give it here so if it is happening through an exchange see it's not regulated sector so it's why you can do it directly also or you can do it through the exchange it's happening through the exchange the liability falls on the exchange where they have an option all the platforms have used them they actually do this now because buyer why will he do this is just on paper why will he do this it will be through an exchange got my point first basics now slowly we are adding layers to it next this is the case where seller and owner is miss kg if you read the guidelines on your own you will go mad this is the gist of it anyone can be picked directly in the exam and given miss kg is the seller and owner but what if exchange only is the owner now if exchange is the owner yes it is possible exchange will be selling it i don't know who is behind it i will i don't know whether kg is the owner exchange is the owner i don't know boss government understands this i am buying through the exchange where is the coin going and to whom i don't know then a question will come should i deduct tds because you are the seller 
I mean, I am the buyer, you are the seller. I am buying from you. Are you the real seller? Or somebody else is there from behind? I don't know. So if you see, Mr. PJ has to deduct TDS. Correct? If you know coin is the owner. But I don't know. Mr. PJ may be confused if BDA is truly owned by Unocoin or somebody else. I don't know. That's why, again, one more dialogue. Mr. PJ and Unocoin, that is exchange, will enter into an agreement whereby gross amount is transferred to Unocoin without TDS. And Unocoin themselves will pay tax. And they will file a form called 26QF. And the best part is, will Mr. PJ be called as SSE in default? Because if you do not deduct TDS, two things. If you have deducted but not paid. Second, if you have not deducted only, generally you will be called as an SSE in default under 201. And you will have to pay 1%, 1.5% interest in different scenarios. Finance Ministry clarifies, in this scenario when Unocoin is the owner, in the exam they can ask you anything, first one. Second one, what does the uh, explain the VDA transaction through an exchange? Third one, what if the exchange only is the owner? I don't know. So again, Mr. PJ and Unicorn will enter into an agreement. The moment you procure an agreement and gross amount you have transferred without deducting T TDS, Finance Ministry clarifies, Mr. PJ is not an SSE in default. Important. Deadly, still not over. They can ask minimum 4 to 6 marks in the exam, guys. They want to play around with this section. Next. What if I do it through broker? There are brokers also now. You see, PJ, step number 1, will transfer money to the exchange. Exchange will now sell that to the broker by deducting TDS. Broker will keep his commission and again further deduct TDS and give it to the final owner, Miss KG. Miss KG will transfer this Bitcoin here, Bitcoin here, Bitcoin here. Two, two times TDS will definitely come. Finance Ministry understands this problem. So they say, kindly enter into an agreement. Who? You know, coin and broker. Merging step number two and three. Merge. The broker to deduct TDS. An exchange again will file quarterly return under 22 QF. You getting my point? Form numbers not important. Content is important. Yes, all these are clarifications, guys. Came sometime in circular, through circular in June 22 or something. Got it? Three done. Two more to go. The form number is, you know, 26 QF here. 26 QF. This is also 26, guys. Right? Sorry. Typo. 26 QF. Next. Exchange of VDR transfer in kind. I told you, you know, this I will uh, explain. Partly in cash, partly in kind or generally in kind. What happens, guys? See, I am Mr. PJ. I am buyer of Dogecoin, seller of Bitcoin. Miss KG, buyer of Bitcoin, seller of Dogecoin. Now, Bitcoin and Dogecoin values are different. Keeps on changing. So, if I am buying one Bitcoin, I may have to give hundreds of uh, Dogecoins. Correct? If I am buying a Bitcoin, sorry, I may have to give hundreds of Dogecoins. Plus, I may have to give cash also. So, when it is like that, what to do? Both are buyers, both are sellers. PJ has to ensure that I am deducting tax 
and giving to KG. KG has to ensure that she is deducting tax and giving to Mr. PJ. Finance Ministry says both are buyers, both are sellers. So each of you has to give proof. For example, if you see here, I am obviously buying Dogecoin and selling Bitcoin. So I'll have to, since I'm the buyer, I have to deduct TDS and then give a tax salon. This is theoretical. I'll tell you why it is not practical. And what is the practical scenario? I'll tell you. Finance Minister has thought a lot. They are telling Mr. PJ, step number one, first makes a tax, uh, takes a tax salon for payment of tax by Miss KG. Similarly, tax salon for payment of tax by Mr. PJ. PJ, you have to give a tax salon to KG saying that you have deducted tax and paid already to the government. KG has to give a tax salon saying that, look, I have already deducted tax and I have paid. Only after it is collected, then this transaction can happen. Guys, practically, how is this possible? How much tax will I pay? Correct. How much tax will I pay? You see, one Bitcoin is 1,70,890 Dogecoin. Let us suppose I do something about it. Then at what rate will I deduct? Let's say I'll figure it out. Then what rate will I convert? Practically impossible. That's why this is the actual one. So here there is an option given to be exercised by the exchange. Important. And this option will be exercised by exchange. Otherwise nobody will buy Bitcoin and all those things. This I have taken Deso and Monero coins which CBDT also has given the same example. That's why. They have given it in paragraphs. I have converted, visualized and made it to a chart. Becomes very easy for you to understand. So if Mr. PJ who is a buyer of Deso, seller of Monero. This is Monero, this is Deso. Very simple. Buyer of Monero, seller of Deso. Nothing guys. He will sell Monero to Unicoin exchange. Miss KG will sell Deso to the exchange. That will be transferred to PJ and this Monero will be transferred to KG. Unicoin exchange will have an agreement. They will file that form 26 QF quarterly. Now, they will see that day's market trend. They have both there. They have both there. They will convert it. This Desero, Deso and Monero doesn't have a market in India. It is not easily tradable. They will, using average rates, which is not relevant for the exam, convert it to Ethereum. Ethereum is something which can be converted to INR. Bitcoin can be converted to INR. Ethereum can be converted to INR. Deso Monero cannot be converted. Very difficult. It has to go through various foreign fluctuations and then come to India. So, I will convert to Ethereum. At a, one formula is there, average rate that you leave, not important. Then that is converted to INR. And the TDS is then remitted to the CG. Who will remit TDS? You know coin. This is what it is. So that's what it says here. If you see, when the consideration is wholly in kind or partly, then the payer should, before releasing, ensure that the tax has been deducted and paid. Now that cannot happen practically. They only realize it. So this clarification they brought about. So my dear buddies, this is the most important discussion on VDA. 100% question. May 23, November 23, 4 to 6 marks. I hope they ask. I hope you understood. 
the only way to study dt is through a dt detox and that is the bayrack methodology and as you have seen whatever was in the bayrack completely concised into just three pages if three pages can give me four marks to six marks think about it on that note thank you so much guys love you all bye